The Chicago Bulls season comes to an abrupt end as they lose to the Miami Heat by a final score of 102 to 91. A lot to digest here, people. Obviously, as you can tell, uh, I am not very happy right now. And it's not that, you know, I was thinking the Bulls are going to go on this long playoff run or anything like that. But, man, I was just so hyped after that Raptors win, thinking that we got this and we're going to go ahead and get into the playoffs and maybe even, you know, steal a game or two from the Bucks, But, Obviously, I was thinking ahead of myself because the Bulls, they had other plans. Now look, this was a fairly close game, 102-91. to 91. But for the most part here, the Chicago Bulls team kind of choked at the end, okay? There's really two things that I want to highlight, okay? We can talk about a lot of things. We can talk about Jimmy Butler's 31 points, DeMar DeRozan having a solid game, Kobe White even coming off the bench here in, in doing decent. But to me, there's two things that determine the outcome of this game. Number one, the lack of defense on Max Struess. Max Struess went off in this one, had 31 points on 7 for 12 from 3. Folks, Jimmy could have had 70. I would have been fine with us losing this way. Max Struess can't have 31. I'm sorry. I'm not losing with Max Struess putting up 31 points. I'm sorry. I'm just not. Okay. Just get a body on this man. After he hits the first three, fine, sag off of him. Second three, fine, sag off of him. Third three, okay, maybe not. But okay, fine. After three threes, put somebody on him. What are you doing, Billy? What are you doing, Pat Bev? What are you doing, Crusoe? Like, put somebody on Max Struess. Stop leaving him wide open. But even after the third three, the Bulls didn't get the memo because he hit his fourth and fifth and sixth. And then finally the dagger, the seven three. Unacceptable. That was the game right there. If Max Struess has a Max Struess type game and he puts up maybe eight to 12 to 15 points, we win this game. But you allow him to have 31. So that was just a piss poor defensive effort by the Chicago Bulls on Max Struess, a guy who they literally kept leaving open. It's not like Max Struess was hitting unbelievably difficult three-pointers with like five guys in his face. He was wide open on a lot of them. Just so frustrating, man. Just so frustrating. And the other thing, right? I said two things to determine this game. The other thing was Zach went from hero to zero. I mean, six for 21, 15 points, like completely awful performance for Zach Levine. If he does even half of what he did in the Toronto game, we win this one. And that's been the problem with Zach Levine, man. The highs and lows, right? The highs are really high, and then the lows are really low. Superstars don't put up 6 for 21 for 15 points in a do-or-die uh, elimination game. They just don't. They show up, and Zach Levine didn't show up. He just didn't, point blank, period. If he even has a average game, right? If he has a 23 to 25-point game, we win this one. Straight up. So those were the two big differences in this game. Max Drews, the Bulls not guarding him, him going off, and Zach Levine not performing. Everything else you can kind of talk about, but really the Bulls held their own for the most part. They were even up in the fourth quarter, but eventually those two things caught up, right? Zach couldn't get it going, still in the fourth. Strews hit the big three. And then the other thing that just was mind-boggling was Kobe White had it going on, right? He was just hitting clutch three after clutch three after clutch three. And then, you know, Billy Donovan takes him out in the last few minutes for defense. I get it, right? They put in Pat Bev. I think they took out Kobe for defense. But sub him back in for offense. What are you doing? Or even, forget that, just leave him out there. Pat Bev was giving you zero on offense. Zero. Kobe was hitting those threes that were keeping you in the game. And you took him out. That was bad coaching on the part of Billy Donovan, who had, you know, he had a solid coaching day up until he made that crucial mistake there. So, yeah, man, it's a game of inches. It's a, um, it's a tough, tough, tough way to go out here. But uh, now, yeah, AKME, this front office, they got to go ahead and reevaluate everything here because um, this Chicago Bulls team, you know, whatever highs you took from Toronto – we're back down to the lows here with Miami. Now, they hung in there tough, but an L is an L, folks.
and they're going home and their season's over. Tough way to go out. There's going to be a lot of decisions to make this offseason. A lot of decisions. I'll get into all of those. Don't you worry about that. This Bulls team, we need to fix some things. I'll get into that. But yeah, man, um, not, not the funnest season by any stretch of the means, but I did like the fact that, you know, after the Pat Bev acquisition, after the all uh, trade deadline where Zach picked it up and was able to f start playing better and this Bulls team made a run, they obviously got into the play-in, they won the play-in game, and then, you know, you thought maybe you could go farther, but hey, no matter if we advance or, you know, Miami advances, Milwaukee is spanking both of us four or five games. So have fun, Heat fans, getting spanked by the Bucks in five games, four games. Whatever the case is, no one was beating Milwaukee. So it is what it is, folks. And uh, yeah, I'm still going to continue with the Bulls videos in the offseason because we have a lot of stuff to talk about with decisions to be made, guys to bring back, guys who we aren't going to bring back. But yeah, keep it locked right here. That's the Bulls season, folks. As always, thanks for watching.